come to order. For generations, coal communities across our nation have made the sacrifices, done the heavy lifting, turned our country into a global energy leader. Many of these communities still bear the scars of those sacrifices in the form of abandoned mine lands as a result of decades of unregulated surface mining that occurred prior to the passage of the Surface Mining Control and Reclamation Act of 1977, known as SMACRA. Whether it's acid mine drainage impacting rivers and streams, subsidence and landslides threatening homes, businesses and infrastructure or dangerous mine openings. AML sites pose serious risks to the health and safety communities across the country, particularly in Appalachia. 5.5 million people in Appalachia live within one mile of an abandoned mine land site, including one in three West Virginians. That is why Congress has taken several steps to address these issues and ensure no one in these communities are left behind. Congress passed SMACRA to perform two important functions. First, for mines that were already abandoned in 1977, SMACRA created a funding mechanism for states to reclaim those lands left in coal communities across the United States. The AML program is funded by a fee levied on coal companies to assist states with reclamation and cleanup efforts on mine sites that were abandoned prior to the passage of the law. This program has proven to be vital to the safety of these communities. Second, for operating mines going forward after 1977, SMACRA ensured mine sites would be adequately reclaimed by the owner during and after operations. SMACRA also established the Office of Surface Mining Reclamation and Enforcement, or OSMRE, whatever that's, OSMRE? Os OSMRE, yeah, thank you so much. Within the Department of Interior to administer programs created by the law to ensure the environment and communities across the country are protected from legacy and active coal mining hazards. I'm disappointed that this office does not have a Senate-confirmed director. Cannot believe it. And I'm frustrated that the Biden administration has yet to even nominate a candidate. When AML Reclamation Fee Rec Collection Authority was expiring in 2021, I was proud to work with my friend, Ranking Member Barrasso, on a bipartisan compromise to extend the fee for an additional 13 years. This agreement was ultimately included in the bipartisan infrastructure law to provide certainty to communities with millions and even billions of dollars worth of unreclaimed un un mine sites. The AML fee is extremely important, but unfortunately that alone will not be enough to address all the unfunded AML issues across the country. That's why that we included an additional $11.3 billion for AML cleanup in the bipartisan infrastructure law. West Virginia is on track to receive roughly $140 million per year for the next 15 years to address AML problem areas through the funding. To put into perspective how much of the game changer this is for my little state of West Virginia, we only received around $15 million from the uh, traditional AML program for fiscal year 23. Our state's bipartisan infrastructure law allocation for this year is more than eight times that amount. The bipartisan infrastructure law is finally providing the funding our state needs to make our community safer in counties all across West Virginia. I'm thrilled that Bob Rice from the West Virginia Department of Environmental Protection, who leads the state AML program, is here with us today. I look forward to hearing his perspective on the implementation of this important funding. The AML provisions in the bipartisan infrastructure law are not just about protecting the safety of these communities. They are also an investment in our future. If implemented effectively, the bipartisan infrastructure law's AML provision could result in approximately $4.3 billion in economic output for the state of West Virginia, 1,910 jobs that will continue for 13 to 15 years, according to a report from Downstream Strategies. As one example, West Virginia University has done extensive research into extracting rare earth elements from acid mine drainage, providing an opportunity to strengthen our domestic supply chain for critical minerals while cleaning up streams, creeks, and rivers that are impacted by legacy pollution as part of the AML program. It is truly a win-win. And speaking of win-wins, nothing could be a better example of how to make communities safer while finding productive uses of this once unhospitable land than through the Abandoned Mine Land Economic Revitalization Program, or AMLER. AMLER provides grants to West Virginia, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, Ohio, and Alabama, six Appalachian states with the highest amount of unfunded priority AML problem areas. In order to explore and implement strategies that return AML sites, to productive use through economic community development. Only thing I want to say very quickly, Appalachia with our unbelievable terrain is why we have so much of this. My dear friend, they harvest coal in Wyoming. We have to mine it. The Ambler grants to West Virginia, 
I got it. Oh boy, that threw me off. So as many a, ways in which <laughs> Wyoming is superior, yes. As a member of the Appropriations Committee, I'm proud to support the Amler program each year through appropriations process. From salmon and lavender farms to a new Hatfield-McCoy trail system, West Virginians are finding innovative ways to revitalize coal communities that have been impacted by abandoned mine lands that are wisely leveraging these federal funds to help make it happen. While I'm thrilled by the ingenuity of many West Virginians who are trying to make their communities better places to live, I've been disappointed to hear some of the concerns about how the AMBLER program is being implemented. And these concerns are not unique just to my state. States get to choose which projects they want to see funded, but they are beholden to vetting of Osmery in order to receive project fund funding. I fully support robust vetting to ensure that we are being responsible with taxpayer dollars, but I'm alarmed to hear how delayed the process has been. AMBLER projects in Kentucky, for example, experience an average total vetting process of about 700 days, seven, almost two years. These coal communities sacrifice everything to power our nation to greatness and should be able to implement projects that will have positive impacts on the community in a timely manner. They sure as hell don't deserve to be strung along by the federal government, tied up in bureaucratic red tape, and forced away to put transformative projects into action. It's absolutely unacceptable. A long approval process for AMLER is unfortunately not only the problem, the administration is seeking to force new and sometimes retroactive rules on AMLER projects, such as requiring projects to record a covenant that gives the federal government extensive, extensive control over the land being used for these projects. These rule changes ultimately slow down assistance to our coal communities and send the signal that the federal government is working against them. This pattern throughout all of Osmer programs is alarming. Unfortunately, suggestions by states to make AML programs run smoother often seem to fall on deaf ears, but not today. Let me give you an example. States like West Virginia must submit three separate applications just to receive their AML funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law, the traditional SMACRA AML program and AMLER. These applications are not a small task and are filled with a lot of duplicative inf information that spans all three programs. State agencies have asked Osmery to create a uniform process with less duplicative and burdensome paperwork. And yet, no action has been taken to make the process more user-friendly. I'm grateful that we have Deputy Director Owens here today to discuss the hardships some of these implementations rules are putting on our state agencies. While a lot of programs mentioned today address pre-SMACRA coal mine land reclamation, I would be remiss if I also did not share my concerns about post-SMACRA mine land reclamation and the risks that could be posed by insufficiently bonded mines. Coal communities across the country are still trying to undo the damage of decades of unregulated mining earlier in our history, and we cannot risk adding further harm by piling on additional unfunded reclamation needs not covered by bonding. These risks are particularly acute in Appalachia, where the prevalence of underground mines instead of surface mines can make reclamation more challenging and even more costly. Deputy Director Owens and Deputy Cabinet Secretary Rice, I look forward to hearing your perspective on this issue today as well. While many of my colleagues in the committee do not have AML programs in their states because they do not have the same history of coal mining, many of their states do bear the scars of hard rock mines that were left behind without any reclamation. Since there is no equivalent SMACRA that addresses abandoned hard rock mines, it seems obvious that SMACRA will be looked to as a model as Congress considers changes to the mining law of 1872. As I've said repeatedly, it makes no sense at all to cart off federal minerals without any kind of royalty especially as we leave communities suffering on ongoing consequences of legacy abandoned mines while taxpayers are on the hook for all the cleanup. So I hope the hearing will illustrate the lessons we have learned from coal mine land reclamation in this country and show how we can apply those hard rock mining reforms too. With, <clears throat> with that, I'm going to turn it over to my friend, Ranking Member Senator Brasso. For well, th thanks so much.